Shazam! Fury of the Gods is the latest film in the DCU, so today I'm going to rank all the PG-13 films in the DCU, meaning I'm not including the James Gunn Suicide Squad movie or the Birds of Prey movie, from the worst to the best. And for the sake of consistency, I will only be ranking the theatrically released versions, since any extended cuts of films such as Batman vs. Superman or Zack Snyder's Justice League are considered alternate timelines, so I'm only ranking them based on their theatrical versions, just to keep everything fair. With those rules in mind, let's get started. Coming at last place at number 10 is Wonder Woman 1984, and out of all the films on this list, this is the one that to me is the most disappointing. I had a really good time with the first Wonder Woman film, and this film fell so short of its potential. It's got some fun ideas, like a magic rock that can grant wishes, but as a price it takes something away, like the story of the monkey's paw, but the way they use it has very inconsistent rules. It's made very clear that in order for the wishing stone to work, the person granting the wish has to be physically touching the other person, but in the big third act showdown, the villain decides to go on TV so he can grant wishes of people around the world, even though he's not physically touching them. They also kind of ruined Wonder Woman's character by using her wish that Steve Trevor was back, which is perfectly understandable, but in order for him to come back, she basically possesses a guy for a week and kind of knows that she did this and just allows it anyway. And so they basically turned her into a villain. And speaking of villains, the motivations for Cheetah are just so darn stupid. On top of that, the plot is overly complicated and very little of it makes sense. Like there's a scene where Steve finds these planes in a museum. And not only are these planes in this museum fully fueled up and ready to go, not only is the plane he chooses a top-secret government invisible jet that they keep in this museum, he's able to fly this plane despite having been dead for 60 years. The script makes very little sense, and though it has some fun action, and it does kind of embrace the fact that it takes place in the 80s by being kind of cheesy, and, you know, Chris Pine and Galvin kind of have a fun dynamic in this movie, so, so much of it is just so inexcusably lazy and stupid. Number nine, Justice League. Now, I liked this movie when it came out, but now that I've seen the Snyder Cut and see the way this film was supposed to turn out, I definitely enjoyed it a lot less. It's certainly perfectly watchable, but now it just feels like a chopped up version of a much better film, which that's literally what it is. Cyborg is just kind of there, and if you took him completely out of the film, it wouldn't change it that drastically. The humor is very awkwardly placed, and you can tell that they brought in Joss Whedon at the last minute to try and add more humor to make it like Marvel. The villain's motivations don't really make much sense because they cut the entire story about him serving Darkseid and why he's doing what he's doing. And why would you do that? That's very vital information. So even though the film is kind of fun and watchable, now that we have the Snyder Cut, which is the version that actually makes sense, it feels like a lazy TV edit of a much superior film. Number eight, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Again, a movie that had potential, but due to a number of factors, whether that be studio meddling or last minute reshoots, fell a bit short of its potential. The main issue is that the film feels very rushed. This was originally announced as a direct sequel to Man of Steel, but then they decided to make it a Batman crossover movie, which also steps in cameos of members of the Justice League. This would be like going from Captain America the First Avenger and then jumping straight to Captain America Civil War without watching any other MCU films. The reasons for why Batman and Superman are fighting are not very clear. Jesse Eisenberg was way miscast as Lex Luthor, and the film spends too much time trying to set up other movies instead of focusing on its own story. It has some fun action, but it is just absolute nonsense. Though, fun nonsense. Number seven, Suicide Squad. I find this movie fun, though I still have my issues with it. Mainly, the first act is very rushed, and characters do not get a lot of time to get flushed out. The first half hour of the film is very choppy, and it doesn't really feel like there is a first act. It just kind of feels like chopped up clips from a trailer can edit together. And I'm fine with Jared Leto as the Joker. I think he brought his own unique spin to the character, but the story, honestly, doesn't have a lot of sense or logic to it. The character development is very rushed. But I still think the film is very fun. It's got some fun action. And I do think the characters do work pretty well off each other. This is just another case of studio meddling causing a film to fall very short of its potential. Number six, Aquaman. Now, I think when this film was first announced, everyone was expecting it to be really stupid. But surprisingly, it ended up being pretty good. 
It's a fun globe trotting adventure, though the story is a bit paint by numbers. The action scenes feel a bit like Lord of the Rings Underwater, and the main villain is pretty generic. But it's still pretty enjoyable, though unfortunately we do have She Who Must Not Be Named bringing this film down with a phone-in performance. And I said this even when the film first came out, even before we knew she was crazy. Bow to her if you want. Bow to her. Bow to the queen of slime, the queen of filth, the queen of putrescence. Boo! Boo! Rubbish! Filth! Slime! Muck! Boo! 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 Number five, Black Adam, which honestly is a bit of a misleading title since the character of Black Adam isn't really the focus. The focus is on a group of heroes called the Justice Society, so the film really should be called Justice Society vs. Black Adam or something like that. The action is very well stylized, at times feeling like the Zack Snyder film. The Justice Society are all very fun characters, the great actors playing them, and out of all the movies on this list, it feels the most comic booky, and it's a fun time. Number four, Wonder Woman. I think this movie is absolutely fantastic with a lot of great action and humor. Wonder Woman, having lived on an isolated island her whole life, being confused about the, how the world works, makes for some great humor. The story has a fun spy feel to it, but the villain is so miscast. Ares, the god of war, and he's played by Professor Lupin from Harry Potter. And even when he's in his god form, he still looks the same, and it makes him look really silly rather than menacing. But I still have a great time with this film. I think it is one of the stronger entries on this list. Number three, Man of Steel. Zack Snyder's take on the Superman character feels more grounded and unique, certainly a very different type of Superman, but also a bit grimmer. For a movie that's supposed to focus on hope, it has a lot of doom and gloom without much lightheartedness, and an ending that's still controversial to this day. Its allegory is also not subtle at all. It's very heavy-handed with what the film is trying to say, and I think it's about 45 minutes longer than it needs to be, but it's still a very well-made film and certainly very bold. Number two, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This takes everything that worked about the first Shazam and expands it. The story, for the most part, is a lot richer, the villains are a lot better written, the humor is a lot stronger, and the ideas from the first film are expanded on really well. However, what holds it back just a smidge is that Billy's character arc in this one I don't think was as interesting. In the first film, he was obsessed with finding his birth family, and then by the end of the film learned to accept his adopted family, and there isn't really much left to do with him in this film as a result. He's willing to sacrifice this film for his family, but I didn't feel like his character growth was as strong, he didn't feel as conflicted, and in the end, it feels a bit deus ex machina. But, given that this film focuses heavily on Greek mythology and the term deus ex machina comes from that, I'm going to give it a pass because I think it does fit within the world and rules of the film. Most of the films, I would be a lot harsher for doing something like what this film does, but I think it does make a little bit more sense in this. I had a lot of fun with it, though it wasn't as strong as the first film. And coming out first place is Shazam! Out of all the DCU movies, this is the one I enjoy the most. It has the most heart, it has a fantastic story with a great main character who goes through a strong, life-changing arc. It's got tons of great humor and a lot of fun action, but it's not perfect. It does have a few tone shift issues, because on the one hand, you have a kid superhero acting goofy and being irresponsible, and then on the other hand, you have monsters eating people. So, it is a bit mixed on the tone, but I have the most fun with this movie. It's for the most part pretty lighthearted and has great characters, and it's the most enjoyable of the films on this list, in my opinion. So it comes in at number one. So I'm going to share it in the DCU, and of course, you can include Birds of Prey, you can include the 2021 Suicide Squad, you can include the extended cuts if you want. It's your list. This is just my list. Let me know what your list is in the comments, and I'll see you next time.